Hello. Uh, what I'm going to show you today is actually another cake that I, um, I, I cook on a regular basis. It's actually, in a couple of days' time, it's my sister-in-law's birthday. She's 40. Um, I'm sure she won't mind me telling you that. Um, and she asked me if I could make her um, a birthday cake. And obviously I'm not one to turn down um, somebody asking me to make them a birthday cake. So I thought, now what am I going to make her? And she likes all the cupcakes that I make, and you've seen from previous photos all the different ones. And I thought, well, I don't want to do a lots of different cupcakes. I know what I do. I'll do a one big cupcake, and I'll decorate it across the top, and I'll put some little special things inside for her. So that's what I'm going to do, and I'm going to show you that. Now, the recipe comes from this Dorling Kindersley book. Um, there's so many different recipes in here. It is a very good book. Um, we've made most of the things in here. Some of the pages are a little worse for wear, um, as I'm sure you can imagine. Um, but as Mary Berry says, the dirtier a, a recipe book, the better, because um, it means that it's been used an awful lot. Um, so this has been used an awful lot. Now, this is a chocolate uh, recipe. The bizarre thing about this is you don't use self-raising flour. You actually use plain flour. Now, usually when you make cakes, you use self-raising flour. But with this one, you don't. Now, in some countries, you find it very difficult to find self-raising flour, or sometimes they call it cake flour. So if where you live, you cannot find cake flour or self-raising flour, and you can only find plain flour, or some people call it all-purpose, this is a brilliant recipe for you to try. So let me show you how to make it. Now you need to set the oven before you start cooking because obviously the, cake, the, the oven has to warm up before you put the cake in. So you need to set your oven to gas mark 4 or 180 degrees centigrade or 350 Fahrenheit. And the recipe, you start off with a jug and you start off with eight fluid ounces of milk. It doesn't matter if it's um, full fat or if it's semi-skimmed or skimmed, it doesn't matter. And into that, you add one tablespoon of lemon juice. Now, when you add the lemon juice to the milk, don't worry, sometimes it sort of goes a bit curdled. But don't worry about that, that's not a problem at all. In fact, this hasn't. Um, but the same happens if you add um, milk to, or kiwis to milk, it'll curdle. Um, so it's not a problem. So we'll give that a quick stir and we'll just put it to one side. And in the mixer here, I've got four ounces of soft margarine or butter and I've got nine ounces of sugar. And into that, we need to add one egg. I've got two here, but I'll add one to start with. And because there's quite a lot of sugar, you need that one egg in there to help mix it together. So we'll put this on in the mixer, and we'll switch the mixer on, and we'll give it a beat until it's all combined. Now, once that's all mixed in, it doesn't take long, um, just sort of about a minute or so, and then we need to add the other egg. So put the mixer on, just on low, and then add that other egg into it, and then put it on high and give it a good whisk again. Now, once that's all mixed in, just scrape down the beater and scrape down into the bowl, making sure that you've got everything. And you will notice at this point that it does look quite curdled. Okay, don't worry about that. Let me just show you. It looks, it looks a bit curdled. You can see it on the beater, it looks quite curdled. That's quite normal, don't worry about that. Now what we've got to do now is we've got to add um, the dry ingredients and the milk and lemon juice. 
So here in this bowl, I've got uh, the dry ingredients. I've got eight ounces of plain flour. I've got two ounces of cocoa powder. And this here is one teaspoon of bicarbonate of soda. Now put those all in together. Just give them a mix round, just gently, just to combine them like that. And then what we need to do is we need to add the dry ingredients and the wet ingredients to the batter that's in the bowl. But we alternate these. So we'll start with um, the dry ingredients. We'll add about a third of the dry ingredients. Then we'll add half of the wet ingredients, another third of the dry ingredients, the last half of the uh, wet ingredients and then the last third of the dry ingredients. So with the mixer on low, because we don't want it to on too fast because otherwise we'll lose all the dry ingredients. Add some of your dry ingredients, just a third of it. Once it's nearly combined, pour in half of the wet ingredients. And when that's all in, then put in another third of the dry ingredients. You must always begin and end with the dry ingredients. And then we'll slowly add in the rest of the wet ingredients. And then we'll add the last of the dry ingredients in nice and slowly and when it's all combined in together then we'll turn the mixer off this won't take very long at all now once all the flour is mixed in and the wet ingredients take it off the beat off the machine and clean the beater with your fingers like that okay there is some bits of flour that haven't uh, been incorporated so just run your spatula around the outside and just mix those last few bits in if you wanted to add some chocolate chips now is the time to do it now this is the tin that I'm going to put it in this is um, a cake tin that makes once you've cooked your cake it will turn into a cupcake so we've got the base of the cupcake here and then this section here the spirally section this is the top so you put cake mixture in each section and when it cooks you'll turn when it's finished cooking and cooled slightly you'll take it out and then you'll put the top onto the bottom and you'll end up with a, a, a lovely cupcake but I'll show you that when when I do it now this tin um, cake you can get it online actually um, but I think I got this one from Lakeland um, but it's really good it's quite heavy and it's very sturdy now, you'll be looking at this going, how on earth is she going to um, fit her baking parchment in there? You can't. So the way to make sure that your cake comes out is you have to grease and flour uh, the, uh, the tray, the, the, uh, the tin. So get some, some baking parchment and get a nice bit of, of margarine or butter and make sure that you go round and you grease every single section of it okay if you've got too much on there it doesn't matter it's best to have too much on than not enough I'll just show you this one and then I'll do the other one um, in a bit once you've greased what you then need to do is you need to get a little bit of flour and you need to put a little bit of flour in there. Then you need to bash the flour all around the tin. You have to be quite firm with it and make sure that the flour goes in every nook and crevice. and sticks to the margarine. When you've done everything in that section, then anything you've got left, just bash out onto the side. Right, so I've done both sections now,
buttered and floured them. So I'm now going to put some cake mixture in each section. Make sure that you don't fill it right to the top because this mixture actually rises quite a lot. I would suggest filling it about two thirds of the way up. So let's put some in here and some in there. Okay, even though in this, this upper one you might only have filled it sort of not at all on the, on the last one, when it cooks it will go over and it will fill in those gaps. Okay, actually this mixture shares brilliantly between the two. If you do make a lot of cake mixture and you've got any left, you can always make some small cakes with it. I think that's enough in that one. Let's finish the rest off in there. This spatula is brilliant. The kids hate it because it completely cleans the bowl. <laughs> so there's no cake mixture for them to, to lick afterwards when I've made a cake. But they're at school at the moment so I can do this before they get home and they'll never know. So once you've got all the cake mixture in, just level it off so it's nice and even and we'll put this in the oven it goes in for quite a while um, if you do one big one uh, sort of an 8 inch tin it will take about an hour to cook I'm going to put this in for 35 minutes then look at it and I expect it will take about 45 but because it's smaller um, it will take less time to cook. So put it in for about 30 minutes, um, then check it. Um, the way to check and see if your sponge is done is um, you push down on the cake in the centre very gently with your finger. If the sponge springs back, then it's done. If the dimple stays there, it needs more cooking time. So um, I'll show you that when I do it anyway, um, just so you have an idea. So I'll put it in for half an hour and I will see you in half an hour's time. Okay, it's been in for half an hour, so let's just have a look at it. Do this very quickly. Okay, just push your, well actually you can see it's still wobbling. Um, so that's nowhere near done. So I'm gonna put it back in the oven and I will put it back for, I will give it another 15 minutes and then check it again. Right, well it's been in for another 15 minutes, so let's have a look at it. Okay, it's not wobbly in the middle like it was. And if we push it, it nearly springs back. I'm going to give it another five minutes and then test it again. Right, well, it's been in for another five minutes. Let's see. Ah, yes. If you look, it will spring back. When you gently push it down, it will spring back. If you're unsure, you can always get... Um, something pointy uh, and just pop it in there in the middle if it comes out clean then it's done so this is finished so we'll pop this on the side and we'll leave it to rest uh, and just to cool down for about 10 minutes right the cakes have been resting uh, cooling down for about 10 minutes now so we just need to take them out now I suggest you get a palette knife and very carefully just don't push down too far, just sort of loosen it. You'll notice that when the cake is cooked, like all cakes, they actually come away from the sides ever so slightly. And that's another indication that they're, uh, they're ready. So go round. Now we're gonna obviously have to take these both out at the same time, which will be uh, interesting. There we are. So wish me luck that they both come out without any problems whatsoever. So we'll put a cooling rack on them. Actually, this is still quite warm, actually. So I'm going to turn it over. Ooh. It's never an easy way of doing this. And, oh, fingers crossed. Oh. Oh, one's coming out. The bottom's come out. Ah, there we 
we go. And there's the top. So that's them both there. So this is the base. This is the top. I'll actually put this the other way around because it's got a flatter bottom like that. So when these are cooled, I'll level them off and then we'll stick the top on the bottom <laughs> and I'll show you that in another one. But that is the large cupcake. Well, I'll leave the cake to cool completely. You can't ice it, decorate it until it is completely and utterly cold. So I will leave that for the rest of the day. And in the next one, I will show you how I'm going to ice it. I hope you found that interesting. Do give that cake um, a go in whatever shape you want to do it, in large cupcakes, small cupcakes, tray bake, whatever. Just adjust the timing of your cooking. Um, this, obviously the smaller they are the less time they will need to, to cook but it is a very very moist cake and it will stay moist for quite a few days okay so I will show you how to ice it next time I'll see you then bye bye <music>